Is it true? <laughs> okay, you're good, Renee. Okay. I'm going to call this meeting to order if we could all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Say it together. And I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I want to welcome everybody. It's good to see a full house here. Um, um, we're a little slim tonight. Um, Bill, Bill Life is joining us um, virtually. Um, Nikki is unable to be with us. Um, she's not feeling well. So um, I would like to designate Tom Chartrand, Lucky, Lucky to take some notes. And luckily we video record, so Nikki will be able to, between Tom's notes and and um, the video recording, get our meeting minutes done. So for purposes of tonight, there should be a motion to, to uh, designate Tom oh. as the a motion. That was a motion by Renee. I'll yeah. second. <laughs> James seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. I mean, I can't just do that. Well, uh, we actually have to designate a clerk for the meeting. Yeah, it's usually the deputy clerk, but this happened so last minute that we didn't have the chance to do that. Um, <clears throat> And I understand, although I'm not positive of how it will work, that there will be some abbreviated hours in the clerk's office this week. So please check the website and the Facebook page because we'll post about that. Um, but um, for now, I know there'll be hours one to four every day. I just don't know about the morning yet. Oh, well, every day, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So um, the only thing I wanted to start with is that there are some Agendas over on the side table. There are, um, there's a signing sheet if anybody wants to speak at public comment. There um, is the historian's report that Ruth is gonna give to us in a minute. And there's also, and I gave each, at once each member of the board, this women's of, Women of Distinction pamphlet. Um, one of our own, um, Linda McChrystal, was honored by um, Assemblyman Sturpey's office as a woman of distinction for her work with um, the Fabius Pompey Outreach. So um, if anybody wants the brochure, it's there. We've also posted it on the front bulletin board just um, to recognize, even though it's posthumous, yes, that's it. Um, it's just a nice, it's a nice um, tribute to somebody who did so much for our community, both here and in Fabius. Uh, who is the author of that? It's from um, Assemblyman Sturpey's office. Every year he does, uh, he picks women of distinction and um, he'll get nominated and he was chosen for um, her work with food. Um, yeah, Fabius, Pompey Outreach. Um, so we have a busy, a full agenda tonight. I thought we would start off on with Ruth um, on our her annual historian's report. The board has gotten a copy. Um, I, Bill, do you have one? I assume it's in my email, so yes. Oh. <laughs> Obviously, he's looked at it. I'll keep it short and sweet. I'm not going to read it to you, but we did have two very interesting authors visits this year and I worked heavily with Francis McCarthy and if you watch the St. Patrick's Day Parade <laughs> the cold Cheers. yeah and uh, he marched in the parade and had his banner on and everything and he's a very interesting man and he's doing research on the Burks of Pompey, the Irish family from Burke Road and Gates Road they own their block of land between two brothers and he's out of the Gates Road brother and there is a story that I didn't put in your agenda, uh, your report, is one brother walked over to the other brother's farm 
and a lightning storm came up and he got struck by lightning and that's how he was killed. Oh and also one of the Catholic windows at the Catholic church at Poppy Hill is a Burke window. And that was done by his uncle. And uh, he's a very interesting man. He has a state of art equipment for photography. So we have another grant it talks about this year's grant which if you go online to newyorkheritage.com.org it is, and type in Poppy Historical Society, it will take you to our Perry paintings and sketches are on there for you to look at. And also it will take you to 46 glass negatives that have been digitized. So you can view it on that site. And we, got another new grant and that's why I said he's going to help us immensely with a new grant for this year because we will do more of Perry's sketches because we got a gift from Alabama of a little portrait of Georgie. He's about one year old in the painting and the meeting in Fabius on April 20th, my birthday of all things. Uh, Ann and I will do a presentation <coughs> about Georgie and his history to our two communities of Fabius and Pompey. And it's very interesting because they're tied closely, his family is, to both towns. And there's a Revolutionary War soldier involved also in that line. So, but there's two brothers. Father by the same name. And I went crazy with that. Identify the right father. <laughs> and so I, I have a lot of interesting research all the time. Get all kinds of calls from all over the country at all kinds of it gets a little mad because when you get one, one two o'clock in the morning, because <laughs> they forget the time variance. And so it becomes very interesting. But I meet wonderful, interesting people. <laughs> Stub Esty, Emily's Estes. Son was here this last spring and spent a lot of time, and I spent a lot of time doing research for him because he's writing a book on a diary that Emily filmed in the house in the attic next to the museum was where they were living when he was a kid. And it's very much about a guy that ends up moving his family. I forget whether it's Minnesota or Michigan he moved his family to, and then they were there like a year, and he takes off for the gold rush. And then he ends up going on different gold rushes for the next few years, and he ends up going with Dyer and um, I forgot the other name. What is Barry. it? Very. Very. And they went even South America on a gold rush. And so they're very interesting characters. So you learn a lot when visitors come because I'm constantly learning our Pompey history. And it's a never ending battle. <laughs> then that quilt that we were given, that is a signature quilt. And it's, I actually know a lot about the quilt and the pattern now, it's this chimney sweep quilt. And I always thought it was my grandmother's name as one of the signatures. But just last week, I saw her gold mine. <laughs> It's her aunt. She had an aunt that was named also Emmeline. Mm -hmm. And it turns out it's really got to be the aunt. And so it makes the age of the quilt even earlier. Mm -hmm. And that will be in the next newsletter. A lot of details on that quilt because I didn't do the January meeting because of COVID. And so <laughs> we tried to put some of that information in this newsletter, the first one that will come out. And I'm working very hard all this last week and this week on our new exhibit because this year will be Grant's bicentennial birthday. And we're now talking about because we didn't go to Mississippi State to the Grant Association meeting that was held there this year, but we're strongly thinking of going to New York City on April 27th because at the tomb. It will be a spectacular 11 o'clock ceremony this year. West Point's pulling out all the plugs. <clears throat> be there in big force. And it will be a very good presentation. So if you can go to New York City, <laughs> there you are. 
And then I'm going to give you a whole site of areas that you can visit to celebrate Grant's anniversary. <coughs> and then we got a terrific gift from the Fenimore Museum. Uh, we, they gave us all their Perry paintings the family had given them over the years. So we have those all in the sketches now. And when we wrote for information about the little boy, Georgie, they decided to deaccession all of the diaries. So now we have all the diaries and all of the paperwork from the family. So we just keep getting marvelous gifts and um, I just keep going. And thank you all for your help and support. Well, your enthusiasm is contagious. Early happy birthday. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Great job, Ruth, like yes. always. Um, and if anything piqued your interest, the, the report is going on the website, so you'll be able to read it. You, you'll find the website that, that link to um, where you can look at the, the slides and the, the negatives. Was that what it was? They're negatives, right? Yeah. So, um, but the whole report is going to be on the website. So, um, we accept most of the reports. We probably should do that one too. Then I'll make a motion. We accept the town historian's report I for twenty twenty one. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. That's accepted. Um, okay. So the next matter on the agenda is the um, application that the town has received from Pivot Energy uh, for a tier three solar project, uh, the request for a solar overlay um, on property on Sweet Road. So um, this is the initial um, presentation before the town board. Um, it is not, um, it, it, we're just here to listen and we're here as a board to ask questions if we have any. Um, and then once that's completed the presentation, the intent is for us to figure out a time to schedule a special meeting where we will actually visit the site, the board, um, and the public is welcome to join us to visit the site, uh, obviously, and that'll be something we will um, give legal notice of. Um, and the other thing I, um, I, I had thought about is we need to also refer this to the Environmental Conservation Commission for their um, review. And lastly, uh, when we're done with this process um, tonight, Perhaps the board wants to consider whether or not we want to hold a workshop of any sort, um, just to, for us, for our own purposes to uh, sit down and work on this. Um, I think. That's a good idea. I think most. What happened to? I don't know. Yeah. I I heard you over here. <laughs> I heard you. Too. I'm here. Was there a question? No. No, we, we can't see you. That's the problem. Oh. We, but but that mean I, we don't know what that means for anybody who's try, else who's trying to watch us. Well, apparently it's still running. So we'll just keep. I'll talking. just keep talking. So um, I just think it that um, especially. James and Bill are new to the solar law, um, having just come on the board in January. So it might be worth our while to sit down and have a an open discussion. I don't think we would do it. We would Zoom it, but the public would certainly be allowed to attend and watch us work. Um, and just tonight is not about, uh, there's no public hearing. So it's just about the presentation from um, Pivot Energy on the project and then we'll figure out the next steps um, after we hear from them. So Gordon. Oh no.
Thank you. Go ahead, sorry. Yep, yeah, no problem. We're a solar product developer and owner operator based in Colorado, but active across the United States. Uh, one of the early advocates for community solar, and we're active in, in all the big community solar markets across the United States, especially New York, where just recently they announced that over a gigawatt of community solar projects had been installed, which is a huge milestone for the state. And in fact, it makes it the leading, leading state in the United States when it comes to community solar. So we've proposed a solar project with the landowner, Bill Sikowski, on a site that's just off of Sweet Road, north of Pratt's Falls Road. That was cleared by Mr. Osikowski about eight years ago. Uh, it was overgrown and brushy, he cleared it, and has since grown corn and hay on site, and is now interested in developing a community solar project there. So uh, I'm based in, in New York State, personally. It's my focus. We have about 100 megawatts of solar projects, community solar projects in development in this state, and that's my focus. So I'm up here quite a bit and happy to you know, meet with people individually if they want to discuss the project or, or at the board's discretion, available to meet with them as well. Uh, I, I know we have a lot on the agenda, and I don't want to go into too much detail, but I would like to quickly talk about community solar, introduce the project, and then walk through some of the graphics that I have here as well. And, and a lot of times people ask, well, why is community solar important? You, right, you can have projects installed on homes, businesses where it's just feeding the, the energy loads directly on site. You can have big utility scale projects that, of course, becoming more and more common, occupying hundreds or thousands of acres. Community <laughs> solar fits a nice gap between those two. We're typically talking about sites anywhere from 20 to 40 acres in size, and it allows for homeowners and business owners that can't install a project on their site to support solar energy and realize some of the benefits that come from renewable energy production. So if it's somebody that's renting their home or business, they're probably not gonna be able to install a project. Maybe they have a roof orientation that's you know, due east or due west, or it's an old roof, uh, or it's a retiree on a state pension and they can't realize some of the tax credits that come from a solar project. Those are reasons why somebody might wanna participate in a community solar project and it gives them an opportunity to do that. And as I mentioned, it's been an incredibly successful way for us to deploy more renewable energy in the state over the last couple of years. Again, if you have any questions about, about this, let me know. So the way community solar works is uh, subscriber decides they wanna join the array, they sign up to participate in the array and they get monthly bill credits that offset their utility bill based on the energy that's produced on site. This project in particular is a four megawatt system, 4.25 megawatt system that's gonna cover as proposed approximately 20 to 25 acres on the 96 acre parcel. The panels are mounted on a single axis tracker, which means that they rotate daily from east to west to track the sun's progress and increase energy production. So you get more energy per acre on the site using a single axis tracker. Uh, we use urban pile system, so there's not any concrete. It's relatively innocuous when it comes to the foundations, how the, the racking system is supported on site. We see the array area with a native pollinator friendly habitat, which is really become an industry standard. So you're supporting some of the native pollinators that are in the area can benefit farmers and also provide a, a pretty nice aesthetic aspect to the array itself. We specify sheep grazing for vegetation management on site. Again, another really common pro practice that's being referred to now is agrivoltaics or dual use, where you've got energy production and you also have an agricultural activity on site. And there are a lot of, of grazing operations or shepherds that are that are starting to come into operation and support sites across the state. And so you, know, when you have the, the grazer bring, the, bring their sheep out to the property for rotational grazing. They eat the grasses, uh, fertilize the soils pretty much. And occasionally there's woody growth that comes up. And in that case, you've got mechanical removal. But we really like the way that you can, you can manage vegetation on site using sheep. So some of the graphics that I have here, just walking through them, and I'll I, I can put them either up here for you know leave them leave them at the town 
for people to come by and look at after the meeting. Yeah, and if you maybe if you put it in front of the zoning map, the yeah. the, the the public can see as well as the board. I don't. Yeah. Know. And so I, I know people can't really see this, but you know, again, I'll leave it here, and we can have them here for the public hearing as well. Uh, what we've got is the town boundary, and then. Uh, the project overlay district, which as proposed is the entire 96 acre parcel of which the project would be 20 to 25 acres. And then around that is the one mile buffer that's in the town law. So you get some idea for the context of the overlay district, the 20 acre project within that parcel, and then the buffer or the boundary that's around it uh, within the town boundaries. That that particular map, we don't have a, a picture of, right? No, it was not in the uh, boundary. I'd be curious. Yeah, we yeah we kind of created these for. Yeah, that's fine. I just I, I don't want to be looking for something I don't have. Yep. Well, yeah. What does that one mile mile boundary mean? Does that mean there you could be anywhere in there, or there's no other solar allowed in that, or what does that mean? Within the town law, there's a one mile buffer around the project site. So once a project site's established, there's 2,000 acres around it that are one square mile, or sorry, 3.14 square miles around it that there would not be another project. Another consideration uh, for us is, and this map shows the same format where you've got the town boundary, <coughs> the overlay, proposed overlay district, uh, and, and the solar project within it, and then the, the one mile boundary. This also has the prime agricultural land. We know that's a big consideration in the town. It's a big consideration with the Department of Ag and Markets. Uh, and we wanted to show the prime agricultural soils on here. We've got a legend at the bottom that helps you identify the soil characterizations. And we've also added, because it's another consideration for siting a solar project, the three phase power lines. And so there are a lot of considerations, right, when it comes to siting a solar project. There's ecological considerations around wetlands, around threatened and endangered species, cultural resources. You wouldn't want to build a project on a historical site, the, trying to minimize impacts to <clears throat> prime soils, and also find locations where we can interconnect. And that three-phase line is a critical component to interconnection. You can't just build a project anywhere. The utility infrastructure has to be there to allow you to interconnect. Uh, and so we've got a three-phase line running up Sweet Road that allows us to interconnect. The maximum size that can be interconnected there under the utility regulations is five megawatts. The reason that this system is sized at 4.25 megawatts is because when we went through the interconnection study <coughs> with the utility, they said, yes, five megawatts is the regulatory limit, but because of the limitations on this line in particular, you cannot build more than 4.25 megawatts without triggering much more costly upgrades. So that's another inherent limitation when we're looking at what can be built, what's the utility capacity there? And so this line specifically has a limit at 4.25 megawatts, a little bit below the regulatory, regulatory limit of five megawatts. And so, right, that's that one there. Uh, the last one, and I know it's another consideration that we're trying to balance out, and that's the visual impacts of the project, right? Talking about a 20 acre parcel within a one, one mile radius is here, or 2,000 acres. So 1% of the project area here, or 1% of the, the acreage of the project boundary. But where is it going to be visible within that one mile boundary? And so, so this is Sweet Road. North of it, we've got the Next Star Broadcasting Parcel where the radio tower is. There's some visibility from there. Uh, on the other side of Sweet Road, we've got some. I'm, Pointing to this, I know people can't see it, but afterwards, um, please come up and take a look. And at the public hearing, I'll be here to answer questions with people. But um, you've got visibility, of course, east, uh, the adjacent landowner uh, to the to the property on Sweet Road to the east. Of course, there's going to be visibility there and some visibility to the south through the trees by, by Sweet Road, south of Pratt's Falls Road, another couple areas of visibility. But overall, you know, the areas in purple or where the project's gonna be visible. The rest of the area based on the modeling that we've done is not. So, you know, it is, it's, it's important to balance out all these factors. And that's why I wanted to present them with the graphics, the interconnection limitations, the 
agricultural issues, site visibility, the environmental issues. We're trying to think about all these things when we decide a project that can still produce renewable energy for people that are interested in participating in a community solar project and allow the landowner to build a project uh, and do what he likes with his, with his land. Can I ask you a question about the, the yeah. purple areas on there? Because that, that is yeah. one of the maps that we did get from you. Um, you can just turn a little bit. I, I want people to know what I'm looking at. Okay. So the, the stripe, like the stripe sort of areas here that aren't fully, like what are, what does that indicate? What's Why is it different than it's all filled in? It's basically saying that there's, because of the, the vegetation, there are spots here where it wouldn't be visible. So when it's <laughs> solid, it's visible right right on the project site where it's solid. Anywhere on that project, project site, you're going to be able to see the array. Um, from Nexar Broadcasting here, where it's pretty solid, you can see the array east of east of the oh, sweet, sweet road. road. You can see the array. But down here, as you get farther away, it's more sporadic because of the vegetation, because of the elevation, because of the tree line. Yeah, because that starts to go back up mm -hmm. on the south part. It's right. So, it again. Right. So you get a little more visibility there. And this is existing conditions. There's things that we can do to mitigate <clears throat> visibility even more. Vegetative screening, uh, tree, trees, and, and fencing can also provide additional screening. How did you develop that? How do you how do you figure out what what area? I mean, some of it's obvious. <laughs> yeah, you we know, work you know, the area, but like, how do you figure out what areas are well? There's affected our landscape architect, who's a consultant, models based on the top topography, the different elevations, the height of the array, the tree coverage that's so shown on their map, and they do uh, computer modeling basically just to show where it's going to be visible. And I think that's where one of the value that could come from a site visit is you can kind of compare what we're showing here with what you see on the site and, and get an understanding for the visibility. You know, what I would like to see is a picture of how the panels are supported without anything concrete in the ground. It's like until I read the, the <clears throat> narrative, I wasn't aware that that was, that was, there wasn't going to be concrete. Yeah, for the public hearing, I could bring uh, additional imagery that shows some of the racking types and the proposed fencing to get a better idea of what the array might look like. Yeah. How tall are these? <clears throat> Will these be standing up there? This is 10 feet in here. Is that that's like, is that like the height of just the solar array or is that the height from the top from the ground? That is the maximum height as they're at the rotation limit. So like I said, they, they're tracking the sun rotating from east to west throughout the day. I think the maximum angle is 60 degrees from horizontal. So when they're 60 degrees from horizontal, the tip of the module is at no more than 10 feet above ground. And so the- So that's from the top to the ground. That's right. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Appreciate you having me. I know this is the first time going through the town law. And Appreciate you bringing the visuals. It's yeah. always helpful to me anyway. Um, Tim. Yes. Um, I just, I did up a little um, checklist for everybody that incorporates into it what is supposed to be contained in the application for overlay district before the board. I did mention to Gordon that we don't have the long form EAF for environmental assessment. Okay. form so we still are going to need that but but I, I i went through this and based on what he submitted and then the fact that we have the the um description, the, legal the, description. The, the legal description of the property on file here which i've provided to um i've shown the board and and i gave to you um i just wonder are we are we good with what was supposed to be submitted um the only thing I see missing is, I mean, we we have the report from the planning board, right. which does not recommend this <laughs> site. Um, we have the concept site plan because that came with mm -hmm. that came in the email, um, the proof of the ownership, at, which also has the description meets and bounds of the property. Right. The letter of intent came with the package. Mm -hmm. A statement about the 
the current zoning, which is farm. Okay. And the proposed zoning, which is an overlay, a solar overlay, and then the present land use and the proposed land use. The present land use is farming or agricultural. So I, the only thing I think is missing, missing is that's the only thing I think. It's a long for me, yeah. So we're gonna need that. Yeah, I don't know why that wasn't proposed. And just you just need part one. Yeah, we'll need part one. Okay. Um, and then we need to, and I will make sure that the Environmental Conservation Commission gets the paperwork that we've got. And I will also, unless there is a reason not to, and this is for Tim really, I would like to post this, this project on our website so that the public can look at the maps and and uh, the, the letter of intent and can be able to judge for themselves what the project is about. Is that okay to do? Absolutely. I can send these to you electronically. Oh, all right, that'd be great. Yeah. Well, the one we have, the front one we have, yeah, but the other uh, two we don't. Yeah. And the one mile radius is very interesting to me. I wanna see, I would like to see that myself. But um, so. The only obviously there's a one residence that's affected by this mm -hmm. right primarily yes. um what have you had discussions with that resident and not directly we've okay. offered to speak with them and be happy to speak with them and better understand their concerns okay but they've not but you haven't had any discussions with that resident not yet no we've offered but not the land the landowner doesn't own the house in front of it. That's carved out. It's a separate parcel. That's right. Tim, Tim, you're referring to the house just to the east, correct? Darity. Uh, the the on the house directly. I don't know. That's not. It's that's bordered on three sides by this. Yeah, it looks like it's. Well, two sides. Yeah, but there's only to... one house according to his visual impact presentation that would be affected. Right? Am I right on that or not? I don't know. Maybe not. Partially on one of the others. Well, there's, there's there's some others that are further away. Yeah. Um, but um, the ones in in the, I mean, full disclosure, I live in this area, so I'm pretty familiar with the housing up there, and so there are some other properties that might be up in, um, like I think Prodox, Nancy, you guys might. If I'm looking at this right, yeah, we'd be able to see it from. We might be able to way. see yours, yes. It might be able to see it from there, but although you 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 face east to your house, but still in all, but so there are a couple of places that. But but the one that one primarily right, is right, affected. Yep, right, it's on the same side of Sweet Road as the product is. Right. So no no not, nothing no conversations or nothing's been done or has there been anything done to try to to work with them or are they well, offered to speak with them? I don't don't want to. <clears throat> impose, but we'd be we'd love to speak with them honestly. I think there's been efforts made and they've been rejected. And this and, is and Billy, I don't know if that, if I'm speaking out of turn, that's but exactly what you said. Okay. I've on two occasions approached the person, the owner of the home. I sold them. The home. Okay. For those on the Zoom. I have no desire to speak to him or me. What when did you sell them the home? I I could look it up. But it's been five, six, maybe eight, ten years ago. And that's the same person there now that you sold it to? Absolutely. We have a very good relationship until uh, you know I went, we approached him to speak to him. Now he doesn't want to speak to me and he doesn't want to speak to uh, Gordon <clears throat> at all. And I think um the way I can Unless so I'm looking you're, at this, you're the owner of the land then, right? Correct. Right. All right. It looks like there's proposed specific fencing around his property. Right. So, we would have to fence in the array. We typically use the woven wire fence with wooden piles, uh, agricultural style fence. Yeah. So, yeah, we, cannot, we, you know, all of this is. No. I, I just want to make sure yeah. that I understood yeah. that the property owner was not part of the, <laughs> the, the, their separate distinct it's not their property or anything. right okay. it's a separate parcel separate owner. and it, again what we're showing here is existing conditions and 
some of that visibility can be reduced by adding a supplemental screen. And further clarity, last week we went and surveyed the property with the uh, surveyor just so that, so that we can, you know, put the property lines and looked at the property lines to see where this is going to affect him as well. Because I want to see it. Because there was some expansion on that particular property. And I was concerned that I was going to interfere with pivots, you know, um, construction. So the, the stakes are still there. So when we make our, our site visit, we'll only be able to see it. Okay. Well, I think for an initial presentation, we're, we have what we need. Um, as I said, this will be on, what we have here will be on the website, um, hopefully within the week. So that, and I know a lot of you are neighbors, so you're interested. And um, so you can look at what is being proposed. And for the public hearing, I can bring electronic presentation that can show on the web as well as some supplemental visuals just to see what we're talking about a little bit more. Okay. Um, I just wanted to... I just wanted to emphasize that what our job here is the town board and correct me if I get it wrong, Tim, it's entirely possible is to determine if this is an appropriate site for a solar, what is being called garden now, I guess it's not farm. I don't know. It seems like there's been a change in the, the terminology it makes it sound nicer, but, or whatever, but um, solar, whatever, you know, a community solar project. Um, so our job is to determine if this is a place in the town where it should be. Um, and that is a balancing act for us that will take into account a lot of legitimate concerns. Everybody's got legitimate concerns here and we have to balance them. That'll be our job. If it gets to it, the planning board will be the one to, to impose any conditions or um, any extra um, um, fencing, um, screening. screening, whatever. Um, so that is not our job. So, but that's enough. Again, we're only in stage two of this process. Um, if we get to stage three, that's the planning board and that's site plan approval. So we're this we're here to determine if this is a, a, an appropriate site in the town. So. The ECC uh, weighs in on it too. I, I, yeah, I said that we're gonna you're you're uh, gonna get the referral this week, so you can start taking it up. Um, the other thing I want the, uh, for us as a board is to, <laughs> this morning I would have said, no way should we have gone on a site visit because I had snow on my, uh, in my yard. But, um, and it's a tricky time of year here because we never know, right, Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I, but I think we should try and set at least a date and then give legal notice so people are um, aware. And then I don't know how this works, but could we, if the weather's bad, set out like <laughs> rain date? Would that be allowed with legal notice? Uh, um, you can, but, well, you're well, you're actually doing is setting a date for a special. Yes. Of the town yes. Um, at the you, location. At the location, I think that you could set two dates, um, and uh, if one is, if the first one is not acceptable, cancel that meeting, um, and then hold it on the second. Okay, so we're on April 4th and our next board meeting would be May 2nd. Um, now, is this gonna be a meeting or is this more of a, just a tour around or what? Well, would be it's, a, it's a meeting. If, if more than three of you are together, <laughs> then it's a meeting. Or if three or more are together, it's a meeting. Okay. So um, we need to, Set it. I, I would love to do a date and then a possible rain date if the weather's not good because it's very likely not to be good in April and it's probably going to be at least muddy. But um, and I asked if we could ride around the property, but Tim said no. We have to walk. So, well, so the, the, because the with... because you are coming with us, whoever is here, so we can't take off and be riding around. 
at, for a meeting if if the public is allowed. Is, is, you know, okay. Attend, right? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. The public is entitled to observe your meeting. <coughs> your yeah. cars, yeah. obviously. Yeah. They can't if we're walking around, they can, they follow, can follow us. Around. Around. Mm -hmm. And that's really the point of doing the site thing is yeah. to walk around and get a yeah. feel. So, um, it's it, and it's not. I mean, I'm looking at it right now. And it's a it's a 90 acre parcel, but it's not like it's it's a pretty open parcel and it's a pretty flat parcel. So yeah, and we're really only talking about 22, 22 of that. I can get a lot of my steps in. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, I guess one other question I have, especially for people that work, would a Saturday be a better idea for a special meeting? So that yeah. it doesn't interfere with not for you. I don't know. Depend I would think in time of the day on Saturdays. Well, what time works? I, I mean, obviously not at night. All right. Af afternoon. Afternoon? Early afternoon. That's a probably afternoon. I probably do. Okay. <clears throat> so do we want to shoot for like the 23rd? Try to go as far into April. Oh. 17. 17. Yeah, then we definitely don't want to do that weekend. So the 23rd. I don't have that on my little calendar here. Saturday's the 20. The 23rd, is that right? Yeah. Okay. And so another day, the 30th is the next. And day. then the ne and then if it's not good weather, we can give notice that you know, and we can also include in the notice. To make sure you check our website and our Facebook page. But so you want to try for one o'clock on the on the 23rd, and that. the same on the 30th if you know the weather is foul. I I won't be available on the 23rd, but. Oh, will anybody from Pivot? Uh, I can probably get somebody here. Okay, because I know you'd probably rather be here, but have a family, family, family comes family. first. Um, I, I have one more. I mean, only because I was reading the stuff. Um, it said here your the preferred is on the on the level or ground mm -hmm. like now is how, how much you know i'm just you know again thinking of the farmland it seems like you know and i'm just asking solar wise it seems like it'd be less interruption of the farmland if it was on technically steeper than it'd be flat i mean flat ground around here is pretty rare so i just i i'm trying to sure I, i'm trying to understand how, is it like terribly more expensive or just preferred because obviously it's easier but you know i'm trying to think with have you did you guys think of that when you were looking this over like maybe it would mitigate the farmland stuff if you were doing the more slopey or yeah and you know, there, i think there's a few things there and, and you know one this was just brush and overgrown eight years ago until the landowner cleared it but to your question the limit's about 10 percent. i mean there's some it depends on whether it's sloping to the south or sloping to the north or sloping to the east or sloping to the west because like if it's sloping to the north all of a sudden you're changing the amount of sunlight that's hitting the array and if it's there's then there's some structural considerations with how steep it is whether or not it can really work and how undulating it is so from a civil standpoint there are a lot of factors that have to be considered um, on this site in particular, you know, we're looking at it as the site that's already been cleared compared to the area that's forested and areas that wet, that's wetland and trying to minimize those impacts. We're also looking at it as a dual use opportunity to bring in sheep and not just take it completely out of agricultural production. It's not growing corn or it's not growing hay, but it is using being used in a productive way from an agricultural standpoint all the same. And I, I think the final consideration, and it's also in the town lawn, something that's just standard in New York State, is there's a decommissioning security that's placed safely away for when the project's finally done, whether it's 25 years from now, whatever it is, that ensures the array gets pulled out and the site gets returned to original condition. And so at that point, it's fertile farmland again. And I know that's a long time from now, and it's taking it out of rotation. You know, Bill wouldn't be using it for the next 20 or 25 years, but it is then returned to active farmland if that's the desire. And we're also talking about within the town laws standpoint, 20 acres within a 2,000 acre radius. So 1% of that area being allocated to a solar array that's going to generate enough energy each year for about 900 average homes in New York State. So, I, I mean, there, that's a good question. It's an important question, but we're trying to balance out all these things access to a utility interconnection. 
minimizing impacts to impacts to ecological resources, minimizing visibility. And you know, if you're on a steeper slope, it makes a more visible slope. And so there's all these factors that we are trying to play in or factor in to account and, and accommodate and design a project that's going to be a productive one and a useful. Do we, do we have them actually have sheep guys interested yeah. in like in this spot or around or I, I'm just I'm curious about that. Yeah, we get inquiries all the time uh, from people that are like, hey, when's this site come online? We'd like to graze it. We, we have some sheep. We'd like to get them out there because there are it's becoming commonplace. I There's an array down the road from where I am in Dryden that's they, every every summer month, you know, May to November, you're seeing them out there with the sheep grazing. So, yes. The demand and the supply are there. I, guess. Okay. I have a question for Tim. Um, if the whole parcel isn't being used, so it's 96 acres, there's 22 that you want to use. You can't use more than 50% of prime prime soil, and it's soil, not farmland, it's prime soil. Um, can you can you limit the amount of the par parcel that you overlay, or do you have to overlay the whole parcel? You know what well, I'm from, asking? From a practical standpoint, yeah, you're gonna uh, we have to me. identify the parcel um, yeah, as a tax map number. So, so we'd have to do a subdivide yeah, or something? Uh, uh, they, it would require, yeah, it would require a subdivide. I, I just don't. OK, you answer my question. One thing on that soil is I've been working with the uh, Lafayette soil and water. That's highly er er erodible. They have it uh, down as HEL, highly erodible soil, highly erodible loam soil. Yes, it is productive. But you know, if you keep plowing it up and tearing it up, it, you know, it does get reduced. Water drainage pushes it off, washes it down. You know, you see the soil. The big, uh, in the, you see a lot of discussions is what's left of the soil in not in our county, but in the rest of the world. That's gonna be in 25 years as it is today. Not that it's gonna feed the world, but it's still 25 acres and it's gonna be prime agricultural again. Okay. <clears throat> so we're gonna do a site visit, 23rd to the 30th. Visit, we'll try, we'll shoot for the 23rd at one. Hopefully the weather will cooperate. If it doesn't, um, we'll try and hopefully the weather will cooperate the following weekend on the 30th at 1. So we need a motion. I'll make a so motion we, that we have a uh, special, visit, a special, special meeting, meeting on April 23rd at 1 p.m. If the weather is not good on April 30th at and, 1 p.m. And at, yeah, that's your street address there. There is no street address. 457. I'll second it. Um, Let me think of something who said that. Oh, um, I have something, no, um, logistical thing, but we can figure that out. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. So special meeting at the site on Sweet Road, April, April 23rd. Um, my logistical question is, should I be concerned about traffic? <laughs> Yeah, where do we park? <laughs> well, that's why I, I'll figure. But we'll figure that out. So that'll be on. That's the town. We can always have um, a sheriff's detail. Make sure that people have a place to park and everybody's safe. I mean, luckily it's a wide road. So, but thanks for coming. Yeah. Thanks for presenting. Could leave these here or move them to the back. That's fine if you want to. If you want to spread them out across yeah. the back so you can have they won't they're not behind each other. That would be fine too. Oh. Referral to the ECC, I got that starred. And at, at, at that meeting, um, if anybody's concerned, we'll be able to speak or not? Not a public hearing. So it's just, it's just, walk for, and look just for a walk okay. and they can hear us talk. But um, because it's, we're going to be out and prevent people from talking All right. to us. So it's not a big deal. I mean, we'll see how it goes. Um, we're obviously, Veronica, we're not asking you to come. In. I mean, we could try if we must, we could figure that away. And you could Facebook Live it, just make it live through Facebook with somebody's phone. Or... Yes, yeah, someone would have to be 
filming it, either me or somebody. Okay. Well, we'll consider that then. That might be a possibility. It lets more people see. I didn't think there was a way. There is a way. There's a way. There's a way. Oh, good. <laughs> um, and what about a workshop for the board? I think that would be very good. This is all new to us still. So. Yeah. So maybe. Um, Hmm. We'd have to set that. That's going to have to be an open meeting as well. Right. No, that's what I'm saying. We have to do a legal notice on that too. But yeah, the, the legal notice is simply a, 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 a informing the press the, for the workshop. For the workshop, and even for this, we don't do a. We don't do it. No, we don't have to do that. We don't have to do a, a, a notice. official legal notice. So it's, it's the one to the media. Correct. Okay. So what would work for, I mean, we, that workshop, we could do that at, in the evening, some night. So. Um, the fourth Monday is the 25th of April. That may not work if you have a meeting on the <clears throat> Yeah, and I'm not sure it matters whether we've gone to the site or not. I just think there needs to be some casual discussion among the board members about the, um, the law, how we're, you know, how it works, and what our role is, and, and um, just so we're doing our due diligence on this. It's very important. Um, so, do, would the fourth Monday work? Mm -hmm. I won't be able to. I could do the Tuesday, the 26th. I think you're a call in night, cancel call in night. I'm done just throwing it out, you know, only because I'm going to get busier and busier as time kicks on. Well, is there anybody of this? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking next week. Is, 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 I'm just trying to get this because once I get out in the fields, I'm not going to want to be pulling out. At night, yeah, I'm just trying to let them help and keep my time and coordination too. Is there, is there, you know, what is going on? And like okay. uh, next week, is there anybody you guys would be available? I'm just yeah. trying to push it up a little bit. To... A lot of this is good for me. Well, that's planning board night anyway. Because well, I'm expecting Wednesday? weather to be poor. Wednesday the 13th. Next Wednesday the 13th. Make that work. No, 14th. How about the 14th? Tam. <laughs> I mean, Give us a date, Tam, and so let's see if we can do your date. 19th. What are we Seven ish. But you never know. Okay. Remember the 19th? Is that what we're trying to do? Well, he's he's available then, but um, and I think it's important to have legal here. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, yeah, because we make questions yeah, on exactly. that. So I, I think I, I agree with that. What about the 12th? Uh -oh. Well, I have meeting. I literally have meetings every day. Um, All right. <laughs> so I mean, I have to see if I can find somebody to. Tom is laughing because so does he. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to make any of those dates. So. Okay. Well, lucky for you, it's not crucial. But um, hmm. well. <laughs> I think the 12th. If I can't be here, I'll send Jamie. Okay. That work. What time? Seven? Is that four to twelve? Oh, um, I should, I could. Yeah. Well, part of the problem is to be the court. Can you close that part though? Yeah, we could close off half of it. Why is court that night? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, then. Oh. Nope, I didn't think that. We've done it before, but yes. those right. partitions are a bear to move. And <coughs> you can maybe move them forward. Yeah. Let's do it. Why don't we just do it the 12th and we'll take half what time? Well, maybe if we, what time, what time works for you? <laughs> Seven, I that's fine. Six, Seven, do you want to do? Does that work for everybody? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, okay. Let's just say the 12th at oh. Tuesday, the 12th at 7 p.m. for a workshop right. on solar. Thank you guys. I need a motion for that. I'll make I'll the motion. You, oh. you do it. I'll make the motion. 
the whole workshop on the 12th. Well, Tuesday, Tuesday at 12, 7 o'clock. They'll keep it up. Hey, Bill, are you, you with I'll us? Second it. Yep, I'll do it. It's on my calendar. Are we good? Sorry, Bill. On my calendar. Okay. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion <coughs> carried. Okay. Okay. Um, where'd you go? There you are. Donnie? Um, you want to talk today? For the county, too. The overlay. Yeah. Okay. Um, we talked today, but do you want to share? Or do you want me to share? Um, well, Donald Chrysler. Um, I agreed with the board last month to put the house up for sale with some copy. And I did contact JF Real Estate and they came out and took pictures, the price I was asking. Uh, Don and I had a disagreement on the price that he would not list it for that amount of money. And we concluded here just last week that I agreed to a price and then with, he said, give me one month at that price. Um, and then we're reducing it um, after that month. And I tried to get with him today, at least, or the very last of the last week or and then today, Tuesday, I'll meet with you. And we'll sign the paperwork for the uh, list in the house for real estate. Um, the only thing I kind of on, on here where it's unsafe building, I, I, I don't know. My feeling is I disagree with that. I had an engineering firm come out and take a look at it, and they did list um, weak areas of the house, but not that it ever was going to hurt anybody or fall down or anything that way. So I just kind of just I feel unsafe building 7364 Cherry Street. Um, anyway. Well first of all that's the name of the out. that's the name of the procedure that 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 the town goes through to, to determine if a building should be is unsafe mm -hmm. to be either repaired or condemned and torn down. And so that's the name of it. But okay I just I, I mean, these eight conditions are just, I don't know how you can say that it is safe, so, but that's for another time, yeah. because if you're going to list it, let's just take that route and not like quibble over whether or not it's safe. If, if, because if you, if you want to do that, go that route, we can, and we can agree to disagree, but I'm hoping we'll just be able to keep moving along. Yep. Find somebody that really does have the means to do something with the property. You know, right. You know, so, so um, it was supposed to be listed by tonight, and then you weren't going to have to come here. <laughs> right. So, um, I'm just curious what the how the board wants to. Is there, is there a way for him to show us without having a meeting that he got it listed this week coming up? Is there, can he get you that just? As I uh, told Renee, I'd send her a snapshot of the paperwork once I sign it tomorrow and stuff that's what oh. So yeah, yeah. Does, so, so if we can do that, that was I think that's, that's just fine. Like, that's good work. And um we can double check that it's listed. Yeah. Okay. Right. I think that's the shortest we've had we've heard from you. That's good. <laughs> <In months. laughs> I, I, I hope it does well. I hope somebody yeah, fixes it up and it becomes something really nice. I'll pray. That's okay. what I'd like to see personally. It is a nice historical spot. It'd be really nice to see it really fixed up and look nice. And I hope that happens because it might make you feel very good about it too. In the end. Yeah, no, exactly. I would really <laughs> better see that happen. That's what I hope happens. Okay. Tom, you're usually first up, but not tonight. <laughs> yeah, first up, doing regular stuff. All right, so on the uh, receipts and disbursements, I think I put it on a separate sheet. I had it originally on top of your pile. Um, really good month for town clerk fees, $1,300. Um, interest is actually improving with NICLAS. Uh, we're still, you know, parts of a 1%, but uh, it's definitely improving. Uh, court fines are picking up a little bit. 
Uh, we did get a safety award from uh, Comp Alliance, our workers' comp carrier. So that was great news at surplus for us. And um, BR took in a few loads of scrap metal, brought in $1,100. Uh, that's about $800 more than we had budgeted. So we have a little surplus there as well. On the highway fund, um, interest we talked about, uh, we did receive a fuel reimbursement from Delphi Falls. Fire District and uh, State of New York finally came through and paid us our chips money for the work we did last summer. So we're finally hold to last year. And the county uh, came through with the first half of our snow and ice removal money. So that's almost within the penny of what we had budgeted for. So that was great news. Uh, payroll accumulated, just the normal stuff going on there, a little interest coming into the special districts. And on the expenditure side, it was pretty quiet for all of the. Uh, the numbers are and normal stuff going on this time of year. Uh, let's see. As far as the big picture goes, uh, general spending is right now at about 20% without the trash district amount in that. Revenues are at 76%. Our highway spending is at 11% and our revenues are at 80%. So PR is doing a great job over there. So thank you. Good numbers. And I I think that's all I had for you on monthly reports. Somebody want to make I'll make a motion we accept the supervisor's monthly report for March. I'll second it. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> motion carried. Uh, the bank reconciliations, I know mine was here. I don't think I mean, if these are in our box. Oh, I'll so make we already did those? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll make a motion we accept the Supervisor, town clerk, and tax collector bank re reconciliations. I'll second it. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, so I also prepared a budget transfer sheet for you. Uh, the first one is to appropriate the NYSERDA grant that we received $5,000, and that's going towards the uh, lighting upgrades, which you signed the bill for tonight. And then the next one is to um, take some of the additional surplus from 2021's closing and move that into uh, covering us for the SAM grant. So our surplus after that leftover from last year was 165. After this, uh, the previous year had been 75,000. Still about got about 90,000 surplus that were higher than the previous year. And then the special drainage uh, district is for Pompey Pines. Uh, we currently have appropriate, or we have unappropriated fund balance of just over 16,000. So we'd be taking about half of what we have in the unappropriated and moving it so that it would be able to be spent. I would make a motion to um, transfer funds as per the transfer sheet that um, Thomas just provided us and um, explain. I'll second it. All those, well, actually, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, and the last thing, um, at Fabius's meeting in March, uh, they did approve the intermunicipal agreement for the swim program this summer. And I gave Renee a copy of their, uh, two copies of their signed intermunicipal agreement. So we would need a motion uh, for Renee to go ahead and countersign and make the uh, make it official. I'll make a motion to authorize Renee to sign the intermunicipal agreement with ladies for the swim program. I'll second it. Any discussion? <laughs> Other than to say they, they're they paying a little bit extra this year, $100 um, a swimmer. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Um, I need this notarized, so I'm not going to sign yeah. it. Yeah, right once, once you throw one copy back in my train, I can get it back to Fabian. Okay. I can notarize it. Perfect. We're so talented. <laughs> <laughs> one practical thing they give you with a law degree is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll um, make a motion. We approve the payment of bills. We skipped over oh, that we skipped one. skipped over that. Well, you want to second it? I'll second it. 
Any uh, discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. I guess I should look at my notes just to make sure I didn't miss anything. <laughs> Tom, could I get just one clarification? For that Pompey Pines drainage district, that was 16,000, of which half would be moved over to a different fund. Is that correct? And we're just moving it to make it active. It's sitting okay. in unappropriated. In other words, uh, on purpose, I guess would be another okay. way to put it. So okay. we're, we're using it, we're putting it to a purpose now. Okay. So um, you're all set, Tom? Uh... Yep. Okay. Um, since Nikki's not here for a clerk's report, we do have her uh, meeting minutes though. And I know they were reviewed by him. <laughs> and reviewed by the board so is I'll there make, a motion i'll make a motion we accept the minutes of the march 7th regular meeting i'll second it any discussion everybody get a chance to look at it okay. all those in favor aye aye, aye. opposed aye. motion carried um <coughs> so i'm not going to begin to try and um discuss earth day but it is coming up can. Can you talk about it? Come up here. Earth Day. Earth Day. Earth Day. Do you have a little bit? Can you tell us a little bit about um, Stan Gorman? Martha, Stan Gorman, Seven Year Road, uh, CC. Uh, I guess member. Uh, Martha's been taking the lead on kind of what we're doing out there. Um, it was our annual tree giveaway day. Um, so we are going to be doing that again. Um, we've talked about that and giving away uh, trees to the residents that come up. Um, what we had done last year, um, there were a couple other things going on. Um, was the uh, scrap metal thing. We talked about some trash. That hasn't been finalized yet. Um, we're going to try to finalize everything in our upcoming meeting. Um, I know that um, another member, uh, Mr. Scalisi, um, is a significant other's wife is a member of the DEC, and so they're going to have a member of the DEC up here for any questions. It's great. Um, Martha is uh, talking about uh, she's uh, very involved in a particular project that is near and dear to her heart. She's going to set up a table for that, but it was primarily the tree giveaway day that we had, um, and we invite the you know all the members of the community to come up and uh, definitely. Uh, We'll give out trees until we don't have any more. I think, uh, did she say she got shredding? I think she got the shredding company lined up. So there I, will be shredding. It was, yeah, there was talk. We talked about it last meeting. I don't know whether she got it lined up or not. Okay. Um, I apologize. Um, I do know that. Um, That's okay. I, I think I saw an email. Yeah, 9 to 11, I think is the time. What about the date? I have a note for um, April 30th. April 30th, 9 to noon for the shredding. Okay. 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 Yeah, we'll have a couple trucks up here for for garbage detail and and tires. Didn't they? And want, then of course we got scrap pile out here for any metal or whatever. Didn't they want people to sign up roads? Wasn't there talk at your meeting <coughs> trying to get the word out for the roadside litter? Um, there was talk of it, but the the issue was the litter. And does anybody want to transport that up here if they don't have a truck? They didn't know if the highway guys would pick it up if it was a lot in bags along the road. Good. We know where it is. I mean, the state does it. I mean, when they claim 20, right, Ruth, when you guys used to claim 20, if they're there. Don't get me started on trash and I. <laughs> we have the worst trash situation on Grass Falls Road. I, somebody. Grass Falls Road, number two. Unbelievable. Bestie. Bestie Road. Number four. Number four. Trash. <laughs> Back to blue light, long necks. Yeah, everywhere. I mean, everywhere in this Everybody's town. Everybody's thirsty. It's unbelievable. Just throw the empties out. I mm -hmm. cannot tell you how many I picked up one day, it just in the half mile up to Sweet Road and back to my house. Yeah. It's unbelievable. And and then I, on the way to Pratt's Falls, down that Gar Gardner, same exact thing. Down by Waterville, same exact <laughs> thing. Both sides of the road. Well, that's light, blue light. Long necks with the cap still on, but the bottles and twisted. I don't see as much of that. Well, that's my right. Unbelievable. So, okay. Um, 
So anyway, Saturday, April 30th, Earth Day um, activities here at the town hall. And just check the website and Facebook page because we'll keep posting information about it as we get it. April 30th? Yes. I thought it was the 23rd. Birthday. Oh, the Earth Day. Oh, the Earth Day. After Earth Day. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Yes. Just got a couple things. Uh, looking for board approval to purchase a great all XL 4100 six by four on the New York State OGS contract PC 69150 in the amount of $473.104 and 18 cents. Which the 400 of that was secured by the Sam Grant, correct? Yeah, oh, here it is. Um, yep, it's, on it's by the Sam Grant, the state aid to municipality. Thank you, Senator May. She was instrumental in getting us that money, and I told her she should come and sit yes. on the great all when it gets here. But um, so $400,000 of that is not coming out of taxpayer, this, this, the, these taxpayers, these property owners in the town of Pompey. But um, it was more, it's what was that? Oh, is it somebody we should be worried about? <laughs> somebody out there. Um, um, it did come in at more, like now, of course, with everything else, it, it came in higher, the cost of it, than what we had originally when we first submitted the grant, um, the, for the, uh, an application for the aid. Went up about $40,000 in a year's time. Yeah. So, and that's on, on a $438,000, um, that's, that's a big jump. So there were some nice discounts in there, but then there was also a steel surcharge. So yep. they sort of balanced each other out. But um, I think that the budget transfer that we just did will take care of the difference between what we thought we had already set aside the, the, with the balance over the 400,000 that was coming from the state. Yep. So we had set aside 38,000, but we needed to set aside a little bit more since the price went up. But in any event, that will allow um, BR to, to get it, um, get us in the pipeline to get the grade all. And then you can turn around and try and find some, somebody to take ours for a, a good price. <coughs> so Probably auction. Uh, if I do this now, this locks it in yeah. so it won't go up more. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. As soon as we get approval, I can sign it. So this is a piece of equipment that you see on Center Road digging out all the ditches. And right now ours is uh, pretty old and waiting for a repair. How, how what, what year is it? <clears throat> oh, 14 years old. What needs to be fixed? Lots of things. Well, <laughs> just you know like you said, the electronics went on it. And when the electronics go on, yeah. thing, that's a big That's a nightmare. <laughs> on Thursday morning, actually. So, so the sooner we get this done, we got miles and miles of ditching to do, so. And we're basically going to get a great all for the seventy-three thousand. Yes, correct. Instead of four hundred and seventy-three. How soon is it available? Uh, they can have it four to six months after signing of the contract. So it wouldn't be available for this year. So you still got to fix it. Yes, exactly. Year. Yep. I'll make a motion then that we purchase the what is it? XL forty-one hundred great all under New York State contract PC. Six nine one fifty for four thousand four hundred and seventy three thousand one oh four eighteen. I would happily second that motion. Any discussion? Anything else? James? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Carried. Uh, the only other thing I had was the uh, I got one quote for that. We're cleaning the drainage retention area out down by the Pompey Pines, and that's it. Uh, 4317, between 4317, 4419, Silkweed Circle. And it's a, it's a detention area that, that is filled in with cattails, silk, and everything. And it's, it's backing up the whole system. And it goes underneath Broad, Broadfield Road. We've been going around and around with this for a long time with a few residents down there. Yeah. So this is a... Bill and I were talking to. This is a good start to fixing a lot of the drainage problems down there. Uh, I'm waiting on one more quote, but the money's already been moved. So once I get another quote, I should be good to go with it. So well, our procurement requires before we enter in, before we can approve this, that so we have the two quotes, or we have documentation on the um, 
who's been contacted them today. Yep. <laughs> so you're saying you want you want that before we we, we should have the second it. quote before yeah. because you would either approve this one, but if the or second the one, one comes in less, then you're in violation of procurement. You both take the lowest. Why don't we? Well, so we can't make a motion to. But you could if, if it came in less. So we'll take the other one that's less. Yeah. When did, were the quotes supposed to be back? Um, they, I've, I've had this other this quote for a while. <coughs> I just contacted another contractor like two weeks ago, so I'm just waiting to get that back. I didn't have a deadline. This quote here is still going to be good. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm just, it's just a, yeah. All right. <coughs> Should we wait on this? Probably, you probably should, should, but the problem is you want to get somebody else. Well, and, and yeah, yeah, and and the rain's coming, <laughs> and um, it's been. I it's mean, not we, emergency status at this point. I don't think, right? No, not at the point. Well, when's that? When's the next meeting? A special meeting? Can we do something there? Yeah, twenty third. Oh, what about so, the workshop? No, you'd be able to do something in the twelfth. Okay, so let's we'll see if we can find another thing. Yeah. We'll put this over to um, our workshop. And just, just in terms of like coordinating things and, and having cooperation from the county, and I had called them because of this project because they have the sewer district. Piece. Um, and so uh, I didn't want us to be working across purposes because the last time the Pompey Pines flooded, which was the October <coughs> Columbus Day weekend rain bomb. Um, um, some of the sewers backed up down there. So um, they are willing to come out. They've already come out and inspected the sewer lines and they don't find any breaches there. So that's good news um, that there's not a, um, a leak in the sewer lines. They have a camera, they can video <laughs> record the, the, the sewer lines. They've agreed to come out. Um, he said this week, I. Hopefully they will. WEP, County WEP, uh, Water and Environmental Protection. Mm -hmm. Protection. Um, and they're going to put those cameras down our <coughs> drainage system in Pompey Pines and um, to make sure that there's no blockages there. If they find blockages, they have these jet trucks that can come and flush you know, out, um, the system. So they're willing to come out and do that for us if, if, if need be. So <clears throat> I thank the county for that because we don't have the equipment if there was a blockage. There might not be, but there certainly was something wrong yeah. back in uh, yeah. Columbus Day weekend. So um, um, so I did look up the information on the great old Jamie was asking uh, the age and it was purchased in 2004, uh, $238,000. So. Thirty-eight. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And we, I think, as I recall, we had the bond for that. So we did. They. Yeah. That was good. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, so Br, how has the how has this winter been? And and you know, assuming we're getting near to the ends of winter, compared <laughs> to <laughs> that, you can't assume that. Now we're going to get our three <laughs> foot of snow. Oh. Uh, if we can, how, if how we was it staying to shut that snow faucet off on seven year old? That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is it, is it, are we, are we, are you, are, are we, have we learned more, use more salt? We're, what's the, where are we? We've uh, gone over a little bit with the salt usage for what we budgeted, but not too bad, but we still have. Quite a bit of salt and sand in there, so we're in good shape. If anything were to happen, if it does, we'll use it. If not, we, we got to start on. We got a good start on next year, so. so and overtime is pretty good. Yeah, it hasn't, it, it hasn't been bad. Uh, it's been decent. Of course, every uh, snowflake falls on Saturday and Sunday. It does during the week. Well, it was last week. Did it on Monday. It was. It was. Yeah, it was Monday. But the guys probably hated that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, and we've got the lion's share of these contracts, but if you want to run through them. We have uh, the Main Street Beautification Agreement, the um, supervisor I met with the applicants um, last week, I think it was, or the week before, and they've all signed those beautification agreements, yeah. or the, the Main Street Beautification um, Project Agreements that were funded by the County Community Development. Um, I drafted the contracts and they have 
uh, I'll sign them. So I think we just need to uh, approve those final contracts. Um, so since, uh, let me, should I, just, can I do them all? I need to say each one individually. Yeah. yeah. So let me just. Are you them approving all. them one at a time too? Yeah. Sure. yeah. Okay. I just want to make my right notes here. So right at the top of my list, uh, a motion to approve the memorandum of understanding between the town and Donnie Chrysler um, for his property on Cherry Street and um, Main Street beautification mm -hmm. funds. So let me, okay. uh, let me just explain. Do you, do you understand what this is? This is money that's coming from the county to these groups who, or to these individuals who have applied for them and been granted the uh, funds from community development. We've talked about this on several different mm -hmm. meetings. So this, there's no risk to the county in terms of funds. These are going to be county funds. In the town. No, to the town. Yeah. To the town. So these are going to be county funds. <coughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. But. No, it's fine. I appreciate the clarification. So the first I mean, that, agreement a, is with. I mean, that one, the one with the, I mean, how does that work if you sell What's going on so, that one? So the, he has. Um, been approved for funding for um, improvements to the property. These grant these funds are um, pretty flexible. If you want to change anything um, with the that, that you want to use the money for, you need to negotiate that with the county. And so we understand that. And he's entering into it knowing that you know this, but this could also be a selling point. Because oh, so, so this will it go. Could, it, it could. So he's trying to sell this. As it a could. Possible. I'm not saying we, we've talked about that, but that's something we have to take up with the county because All if right. the ownership changes, it it might change. But okay. but so for now, he he his agreement with the county is to do improvements on the property. All if right. he wanted to switch it, for instance, we've talked about to demolition. We could talk to the county about that, and this agreement could be amended to cover a different. The cost, the, the amount of money that is being offered to each of these business owners will not change. It's set, but what they use it for can be, you know, it's been a while. The county took quite a while, long time to get these contracts, not these, but the one between the county and the town to provide this money. These are between the town and the business owner. So this is still a plus for him, even mm -hmm. though he's thinking or trying to put up for sale. Yeah. That, that, that was my question because we selling it. How does he fix it? That's a good question. And each person or company that is getting the money is responsible for 25%. They're, they're covering the first 75 and then the other. All right. And money that way he has to put 25% in. So that would help the incentive for the person getting it to maybe fix it. Perhaps. Oh, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's say well, no guarantee, I'm but be an optimist. A, yes. So I've made a motion to second it. To, um, well, Figure can I make a motion first. to authorize myself to sign this? Because that's what I'm doing. To sign second. this on behalf of the town. Second. And seconded. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. So I make another motion to um, authorize me to enter into a memorandum of, of understanding with Hilltop um, Ice Cream Store in um, Pompey Hill um, um, for improvements to that property through the Main Street beautification. Awesome. And seconded it. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Third is uh, a, a memorandum of understanding between the town of Pompey and Kellish Tire Sales here in Pompey Center um, with a laundry list of activities <coughs> including paving and uh, replacing garage doors and painting the exterior, etc. cetera. So improvements to that property. I'll second it. Authorize me to sign that. Yeah, being seconded yeah. it. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Fourth is um, Animal U with the Pompey Mall um, to do landscaping and sign refurbishing and beautification improvements. Um, and um, I would ask a, a motion to authorize me to sign the, the MOU with Pompey Mall. 
motion. Or you, or you, you're made the motion, right? I make, I, I'm making them because I got the these in front of me. I'll but second. It's silly. Yeah. Um, any discussion on this one? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. And last, um, the memorandum of understanding with <clears throat> Wayne Clark, who owns uh, commercial property at 2620 Route 91, which is next to Hilltop, which is where Science Solutions is, just in case you're wondering. Um, he owns that building and he as well is um, um, requested funding to improve that, that um, property. So I would make a motion to authorize the supervisor to sign this agreement. Second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. So those five I will sign and get to Nikki. The, the next item is the uh, engineering contract, which is basically an engagement letter that Romo, uh, I reviewed it. The only question I had, which I asked you earlier, was about the insurance. If the limitations in here are sufficient, yeah, I I think they're sufficient. Um, it's a million dollars. There's no umbrella on it, but other than it's a million dollars, which is a standard. Um, rate of insurance for the town. Okay. I'll make a motion to authorize Renee to sign the general services agreement with Don Scromo Engineers. Bill, you want to second that? I'll second that. I include him. Um, uh, any discussion? Everybody looked at it. If this is exactly the kind of service agreement from an engineer that the town should have. I'm so much happier with this. So um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carried. Did Bill, did you say aye? I did. Aye. Okay. Yep. Motion carried. The uh, third agreement that is before the town board is the intermunicipal agreement with the county as it relates to referrals that uh, have to be made to the county under the general municipal law section 239. Um, there are there are various types of uh, actions that they're exempting from the 239 referrals. I reviewed them. They're, they're almost identical to what we're already not providing the county. So um, they're just asking us for our comments on it if we have comments on it and are agreeing <laughs> to it. I see no reason not to agree to it. Um, uh, again, there are things like setbacks, signs, uh, things that generally will not have a countywide impact um, by their very nature. So therefore, we don't have to send them down. So we don't have to refer it to the county for review. And I did run this by both the zoning board chair and the planning board chair as well, just to make sure they were satisfied and they both were. I'll make a motion that we authorize Renee to sign the agreement with the county making uh, just 39 referrals. Exemptions. Exemptions, yeah. And I'm gonna need to fill this in so it's not gonna be signed tonight. That's it. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, the next item on the uh, the next contract is the Comp Alliance Members Participation Agreement, which I have reviewed, and um, I'm recommending that you sign so that we can um, continue our membership with Comp Alliance. It's the same agreement that we've signed in the past. And it's for workers' compensation. There are our um they provide us workers' compensation. And they actually um this year, I mean I think in part because we've had, I'm not even gonna say it, but um it went down five percent the cost of the um, workers comp coverage. So um last year it was like 30. Four, 34, yeah. 
Why did it go down? Yeah, we have a good I don't want to say because of jinx it. Because <laughs> we got our safety award. Yeah. No, <laughs> Last time I said something, I think the great all broke or whatever, right? Yeah, Next so day. I'm not, yeah, I'm not saying anything. You want me to make a motion? Yes, I'll please. make a motion that we, uh, what is it? It's the, the membership Alliance alliance member, member participation agreement. Yep. No, I'll second that. I'll second it. Yeah, I'll take the last page of this. Yeah. Um, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Um, when the last contract is the uh, Syracuse Time and Alarm Company um, subscription, uh, hired them to come and check out our alarm systems. It's $50 a month. <coughs> Standard contract. Um, Dollars. Yeah. Yeah. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion. Aye. 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 I did it, but I don't think I printed it out. So we, but we approved that. We approved it last month. Last meeting. So I just want to. Just the resolution authorizes us to participate in the Stormwater Coalition, um, and we need a representative. In the last resolution we had. Me. Yes. And I don't want to be it. Right. Okay. So I think it's appropriate now yeah, to the engineer. amend that resolution. To authorize John Dunkel on behalf, or Dunn and Scromo actually, on behalf of the town to um, be the representative to the Stormwater Coalition. So I, I would make a motion to amend our resolution, which I think was the first one of the year, 2022 1. 1, um, to appoint Dunn and Scromo as our representative on the Stormwater Coalition. Second it. <clears throat> and second it. Any discussion? Sense. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. I do have that done. I just um, forgot to put it in your packet. That's all I have for tonight. Yeah. Okay. So my, my um, section of the supervisor report is short. Um, the codes office, the status of our hiring is we've had, we've, we've solicited several off of the county civil service list for um, Inviting them to apply. Uh, I have that one response um, from, from one person who is not um, able. To, I haven't heard from any of the rest, and it was I think six or seven letters I sent out. Um, we did get. Um, that was a negative response, you said, right? A negative, yes. Yeah, sorry, and um, we did. I also contacted some of the people that had applied last summer, and we did get a little bit of a response from them. And so all said and done, including the people that have reached out, we have about five candidates that we're looking at too with the certification from the state on the building codes, which is good. And we're in the process of interviewing and hopefully that will be, and maybe next week or before the next board meeting, we will, um, we'll, we are gonna hire as soon as we get the, the, we decide, but Dave Tessier, our zoning board chair, and I are the ones doing the interviewing and um, it's going well. It's, uh, we've restructured the codes office. We're hoping it's gonna be um, staffed so that we can more um, effectively serve the public, which is really the bottom line with that office is to make sure that that we're, we're covering what we need to cover um, for the town residents. So that's where we are with that. Um, as far as new business goes, I did um, <coughs> last summer um, when I was going through the Main Street beautification funding opportunity with business owners, the town um, realized that Wayne Clark was very um, well-versed in all things regarding property assessments. So I have been bugging him to um, fill the vacancy on our board of assessment review. So I would like to nominate him to, to that. He has agreed to do it, um, to fill that vacancy. Um, and then um, he needs to take the training this month in order to sit next Monday. month for grievance day. 
So I would make a motion to um, nominate Wayne Clark to fill the vacancy on the planning board, on the board of assessment review. I'll second that. He's a good guy. I think he'll do good. Hey. Is, is there, I, I mean, I just, I, I don't know him personally, so I was wondering. Yeah, well, I didn't know until last summer, but speaking with him about assessments and even reval, just say the word, but everybody freaks out, but a reval and whatever, he just really understands um, that type of, that, that the nature of that work. And so I think it would be a good addition to have somebody with some background in it. Um, um, that's all I can really tell you. He's been, he's been um, responsible and attentive to the Main Street program. And Bill, you got anything about, you want to add? Or? Not at this time. Okay. All right. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. We will add Wayne Clark to our Board of Assessment Review. And I think the only spot we have open right now is on our ethics board. I think we have one slot. We should so, probably make a motion authorizing all of the people on the bar to attend the training and the town will reimburse. I don't, is, is it, does it cost anything? I don't know, but I don't, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Yeah, we don't think there's any charge we've never before. Okay. I don't is know. it virtual or do they have to travel? No, they have to go to, I think it's Salina. So we no, have to, Salina. we do reimburse for mileage in those cases. So. so I will make a motion that we um, authorize any of the members. First, there's a couple that have to go, but anybody else who wants to go to attend the, um, the training, I think it's April 27th, the end of April um, for board of assessment review members um, and reimburse them for any out-of-pocket expenses. Second up. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. I to get through that as quickly as possible. Did anyone sign in over there? Did you sign in? Deborah Vernier. So if you would just I know, I know you, but just so that people know where what road you live on and all that good stuff. I'm at 2010 Cemetery Road. My name is Deborah Vernier. And um, I just had a couple of things. Um, the first addressing the solar project, the solar garden. Um, he mentioned something about a landscape architect. Could they maybe do some sketches of what it would look like? Um, maybe town residents could see that. Could we request that possibly? I will ask. I can ask Debbie. <laughs> Just put it up on the site so yeah. the residents can see from the different, yeah, the different zones that would have visibility of the, of the solar panels so people could see what it would be like. Um, the other is, um, you know, I'm glad that everything was resolved with um, Mr. Chrysler's situation, but there are quite a few of other homes in the area that are very dilapidated. Mm -hmm. So without a assess, without a um, codes enforcement, it's been a little difficult, but I'm pretty sure there's a house on uh, number two road west that's been already condemned. I'm just wondering what the status is of that. It's, uh, I don't know of any house condemned. Is... I think it's on, is that the one in the corner of Waterville? Almost yeah, to Waterville? I believe it is. It's right on a uh, creek or something. Yeah, it looks like it's about yeah. ready to fall in. Um, the back of the house is completely gone and the roof is caving in and there's windows like there's no window, no board, it's not boarded up. Pretty bad. Um, well, that's just one house. There's probably three others that I go past regularly. And just wondering what the status is of those homes, uh, what's being done. I know that the one in um, the center of Pompey was, in, you know, a center you know, focus. But what about the other homes? There's one on uh, um, Pompey of Pompey Club on Route 91 um, on the Pompey Club side. And the roof is caving in, and it looks like he's built a house kind of near it or a pole barn that he's turning into a house. None of these are a surprise to us, Debbie. Okay. It, it's I'm a matter, yeah, that. it's yeah. a matter of, um, and, and there's, if you think you know those two, I can give you six more. Oh, I'm sure. They're I'm everywhere sure. in this town. Under a pass, the number five yeah. rollers, one across from Dennis Cole. <laughs> I'm telling you, they're everywhere. And and um, there, there's Pompey Hollow Road. There. 
or Delphi Road. You almost can't name a road where there's not a Orange Golf Road. Okay. There, yeah, there's, there's, they're everywhere, and they can only do, get to first of all so many at one time. And but um, some of these, I mean, how about right here? Yeah, <laughs> the barn next door. Yeah. Um, now we're it, there are several of these houses that the codes officer was working with, trying especially this one here, the one on ninety one. Um, I just got a call on the one on Orange Golf. I, I'm handling the complaints at the moment, so. Um, I'm, I'm very familiar with these. I got an anonymous call on the one on Waterville and number two with no phone number, so I couldn't call anybody back. Um, so we're very aware. And believe me, when we get the office restructured in the codes office, they're gonna get um, prioritized and we'll start to go down the list. That's all I can tell you. Well, I just, I'm curious why his house was singled out. The one in this price. Because we had so many complaints. Okay, so we just have to complain. What do we complain to? The codes office or me at this point. Okay, so people, if they're upset about, you know, the structures that are actually much um, more unsafe than his, his, an engineer said it was safe. Um, no, he didn't know, say it was safe, safe, Debbie. He did not say it was safe. So let's be clear. He did not say it was safe. He, he, he structurally sound? Nope. He did not say any of that. He would not say it was unsafe, but he didn't say it was safe. Okay, I'm sorry. Right, Donnie? Yep, he didn't write in there that it was safe. He just pointed out the areas that- He just were, had some- He didn't some yeah. And Yep. Just need to be done. Yeah, the house on number two road, if you open the door, there's like, goes right down to the basement, I guess. You know, you can like look through. Have you been there? Oh. Oh. I've oh, it sounded there. like you knew, like you had the property. No, I have not. It's all posted. I would not go on post the property. But just got by it. You can see a lot, you know. Is there anybody else's name on the list? Yes. Uh, Stan Gorman's on the list. Right. And, and, and before we get to you, I just want to ask Veronica if there's anything on the, um, if, only because I know you're probably going to take a, a bit of time. I'll try to be brief. I'll believe it if I see it. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. Nothing. Okay. Stan Gorman, Xavier Road, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, and nice to see you in person. <laughs> um, Mr. Light, Mr. Loomis, I would encourage you to get very familiar with the tower overlay district and the solar laws in this town because I know they're very hot items. Um, what I'm going to hand out to the board is uh, information that I've come up with. Um, I also, when I talk about 165-10, uh, which you're familiar with, it has to do with the solar over, I'm sorry, the cellular, the Telecommunications. Telecommunication. It's uh, the only <clears throat> district on Sevier Road, which um, my family and many of these people have bought. Um, <coughs> yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah, and uh, this is for the tower stuff, right? Yeah, this is for tower stuff. Right. Um, this is a hot, uh, I'll talk a little bit about it in a sec. Thank you for a while. Yes, please. He's probably going to make paper airplanes out of it. That's fine. Control number two. I mean, it's fine. I have no problem with that. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, Myself, my family, a lot of the residents, we've been involved with this for 25 plus years now. Um, and the changes on Sevier Road, uh, there have been a lot of promises made by former members of the board to myself and members of our concerned uh, citizens group that goes back to literally back to um, the late 90s. Um, I've been involved. That's when I kind of got involved. I know this goes back to Tower um, Channel Nine. Tower was built in the '60s. Um, there was a that brought some stuff up in the '80s, and now 2000. And now it seems like we're in 2022. So 
Um, again, we've seen a lot of changes up there. Um, a digital antenna's gone up, a Doppler radar's gone up over the years. Um, Verizon has made quite a few changes to their tower. Um, and now T-Mobile is looking to put another cellular array on top of their tower. I've got concerns personally about all the stuff that's coming off the towers. Um, I know a lot of people have the same concerns. It's something that I've done a lot of research on, feel very strongly about. Um, I know that the town under this code, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, is obligated to do monitoring every six years. Um, I know in the last 20 plus years, it's been done once. <laughs> um, we've talked about it. Whether this law needs to be rewritten to bring it in line with the solar law, which I think is did a great job with. Um, maybe it has to be addressed and I, I'd love to speak with, with Tim about any of my feelings with that. What I gave Tim and what I'm leaving for Nikki is the original draft of 165. <laughs> and that may speak to the intent or what I'm talking about, the intent of the law. I know what the law actually says. Well, I'm not a lawyer. So I, I don't profess to be. Um, so I don't know what the law actually says. My interpretation of it might be different because I'm not a lawyer and obviously I'm prejudiced to what I'm, I'm doing. But I give that original draft as kind of some of the things that we were promised. Um, where we're at right now, like I said, I think there still needs to be testing because the stuff that's coming off of that, um, whether it be radar, whether it be solar or cellular, um, or whether it be, you know, channel lines, the, their digital antenna, um, all I can tell you from my personal experience, if there's really no harm, then why does everything have to be off if anybody's working on the towers? So that's where I'm coming from with that. Part two of my why I'm, I'm doing this, I've been tasked, um, I think it's okay to say, by our supervisor as part of my job with the ECC um, to kind of find out what is up there. Um, you saw I brought in a stack of stuff that is a foot tall. Half of that stack is just trying to find out what is actually on that tower overlay district. And it's been very difficult. Tim's written letters, I've written letters, and it's done a, uh, some, some work on it as well. And to try to find out what's going on up there is very difficult. So, I mean, here we are. Now we have another, what I would say, cellular company coming in. Um, Tim gave me a few minutes of his time before the meeting. I appreciate that. But I'd like to talk about, when you talk about this 165-10 law, um, the way it was interpreted by the town, whatever, because they were putting up antennas um, that we didn't, we didn't need to be notified. Um, that wasn't the intent of the law, but I guess I can't speak to intent because that may not be what the law says. What I kind of outlined and what I'm giving you as a board is what I feel is some of the stuff that when you look at this law, and um, we talked about where I got read. I brought this to Sue Smith's attention as well, and she's mm -hmm. taken some time with it. And I appreciate her work on it. Um, it's on page three of your thing here, and it's, um, I think, item number three. You talked about uh, telecommunications antenna placed on existing telecommunication tower do not require site plan approval unless existing tower or structure is a secondary site or unless it will be modified in such a way to increase its height. Now, when I talked to Tim, he said the tower height is not gonna increase, but some of the pictures that I've given you, when you look at the cellular antennas, when you look at, first of all, this is a building permit. That was the first thing I gave you. This is the tower as it stands right now, okay? wants any, I'll give you copies of these afterwards. That's a little bit closer. You can see all the guide wires that come off of it. So my, I'm not an engineer, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not any of that. My only natural assumption is that the only place you can put a cellular antenna is on the top of that tower. Okay, well, maybe I'm wrong. 
on these. Yeah, it's, it's going to go, well, it'll go up to the top. But not over. I would say that these are about 10, 12 feet in length height. Either way, um, I guess my point would be, I think it's raising the height of the tower. That's one condition. There's gonna be some accessories put on the tower. That's another condition. It's gonna significantly change the view shed. Um, I left a uh, picture I gave you, a picture of, this is the Verizon tower. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, when we first started this journey, this tower wasn't even there. And then we got this candelabra in the middle, then they added this one, then they added the one on the top. And it was all under the guise of routine maintenance. So since we started, this went from a pole to now this. And under the town code, um, I've been told it's routine maintenance. Um, I see the cell towers as going from 3G to 4G and maybe 5G someday. Um, they're increasing their capacity. They're making a lot of money, which brings me to my second point. Okay, these towers, and I, and I think we all agreed on this, have changed significantly in value. When you're adding this amount of hardware and whether anybody in this town agrees to me or not on what's coming off of them, they should be concerned about what they're assessed at. Um, I've talked to a number of people, the average cell tower, I mean, could cost an excess of 250,000 to put up. Um, not one of these cell towers is assessed for more than 130. I think we looked at it today. Channel nine is different. They're assessed for 600 and something thousand. That's Very channel nine towers. But even that, to me, when you have two digital antennas on it and a Doppler radar as part of that property, should be addressed. Um, my whole point for standing up tonight is to make anybody in the community kind of aware of what's going on on Sevier Road, whether it be my neighbors or not. We've talked about it. The building permit was issued. Um, I chirped in one of the meetings and you said you knew it. Um, I said, okay, well, I brought it to the board. And then when we talked a little earlier today, the question was whether or not they were through. And you were gracious enough to go up and look and found out that no, indeed, they weren't through. And um, our former code officer had signed off on the Verizon Tower, which again had been modified. And now we've got T-Mobile up there. I think there's a lot of other things that in this law need to be addressed. I mean, were alternate sites considered? Uh, you know, there's a lot of other things that I would like to sit down and talk to somebody about. Um, because I feel the law was written to protect not only the people in the area, but the town in general. And right now, we really don't know what's up there as a town. Um, and I'm, I feel like I'm the loudmouth that always has to stand up and say, well, Ra, look what's going on um, when, when all this started. I, we were promised that we would be notified. And I understand, you know, your limitations, the money issues, the code enforcement officer, and where we're at. Um, but moving forward, I really, really think this needs to be addressed. And, um, you know, I just, I got a lot of concerns that this law hasn't been adhered to. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, but I know what the intent of the law was, and I just think that over the years, a lot of changes have been made, and these telecommunications companies come in, and they feel they can bully us. They feel they can do a lot of things. And I really think, I mean, I've got the folder over here that is this thick with information that we're trying to gather, um, and whether we need to, we did it 20 years ago, have some sort of moratorium that we can stop and say, time out, what is going up there? What is the value of it? And whether it be Verizon or whether it be, you know, 93Q or Channel 9 or, you know, T-Mobile or anything, we should have a better handle on what is up there. Um, that aside, from a personal note, I really think the town needs to get back into testing. It is something that was promised and, and, and hasn't been done on a regular basis. Um, and part of the law even dictates if T-Mobile is going to be putting something up there, 
that they have to test every two years. So I, I really think, I know we're, we have a lot going on, but I really think this needs to be addressed because I think one, from my personal standpoint, or a lot of people, there's a safety issue with what's coming off of there, but more importantly, maybe they're assessed. And if we're looking for money for stuff, this might be a good place to start. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if anybody has any questions, but um, Stan, before you leave, I think there's a box of boxes here. We're giving you a box for all of that stuff. <laughs> you cannot walk around with it. Like you're gonna, so anyway. It's all good. But, but, it's like I've got, I, I know where everything well, is. I know, but put it in a box. <laughs> put it in a box. <laughs> in a box. <laughs> um, it's, it's 25 years I would of be, stuff. I think we would be happy, Tim, I don't mean to speak for you, but to try, I mean, you know we have tried to get information out of the owners of these towers and it's like pulling teeth um, for two years. This is what we went through yeah. 20 years ago. Well, and, yeah. and, 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 and I, I, I am happy to try and to revisit all of this. I am, I've talked to Brian Fitz today. We've pulled all the tax maps. You got the tax bills. I pulled all the assessment roll information. Um, the only other tower that's close to being assessed at anything is the one on Indian Hill, and they just assessed. We just did that one last year, I think, for two hundred thousand. But the rest of them are all in the hundreds. All right. So, okay. but and but one of the things is trying to figure out what a tower should be assessed for. Well, so we hire a consulting, I, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't want to spend the town's money, but I mean, it might be money well spent because what yeah. we get charged <laughs> about what's up there in terms of reassessing what they have. Um, I think there's a I completely agree with you on the assessment issue. I completely agree. Yeah. I, I think it's long overdue. I, I don't think anybody had been paying attention to the cell tower overlay areas. Well, and I think, what, I think it's been neglected it's been, for years. It's it's a there are two there's two overlay districts in the town, and they are like any other properties in this town and the law that they're supposed to operate under. Right. And they that's what I bring them. up when I brought up to Sue's attention and I asked about you know when I read one sixty five dash ten it talks about planning board planning board planning board and I know you said the code enforcement officer is the one that enters the permit, but if it was at the planning board's discretion to I thought let the code officer do that. And it had to go somehow in front of the planning board. I've got a lot of my my whole life, well, not my whole life, but the last 25 I years know. has been spent I know. with this issue. So, you know, and obviously the testing is something that I, I really, I think needs to be done. And if they're not, I mean, and who knows? I mean, there, there were a lot of variables 20 years ago when we did the testing, different times. I mean, you know, they can, take the knob and do this when they want to. And if they know there's testing, they can do this. And so there were just a lot of things and that's why it talks about arbitrarily and we don't have to notify them, we can do it. We do our own, we're, we do our own every six years, which hasn't been really done ever. If, if I understand it correctly, there was a partial one done because that's all the money that the town had at the time right. in what, 2018, 2019? Yes, 2018. And that's because you made an issue out of it. Um, and I, I don't disagree with you on any of this. We have tried really, if, I mean, you and Ann, especially, and Tim, trying to get these companies to tell us what's on these towers. We can go there and look at it, but I have no idea what's out there. And it's a show game because the American Tower might own the tower while T-Mobile owns the antennas and who's paying what. It's a, it's an owner, they own them, they sell them to a company, the company leases them back to the ones that want something on it. That's how they work. So it's been very difficult to figure but out. But in regards to that, who actually pays the taxes? There must be a name on the assessment yeah. roll. So. Those are the companies that own the towers. So. And letters so have been written and there, there's been a lack of response. And quite honestly, I mean, Everybody think knows that I mean I run the Poppy Club and now getting into my busy season. That's why I've never run for town board. I can't do it justice. I you know when I do something I try to do it at a hundred percent, and that's why when I was tasked to try to do this, I've spent as much time as I can on it, um, and I give as much as I can. I volunteered you know for the ECC and to, and to do a lot of this stuff, 
but I'm getting into my busy season. So honestly, it, it, I know I'm not going to do a due diligence in the next few months, but come October, yeah. November, guess what? I'll be right back at it. And that's probably the best I can do. So. Do I say anything? Stan, how frustrated do you get with the, the federal communication system? Because they're the ones that block a lot of this from happening. The FCC, because of their oh, laws. To your point, uh, I went on the FCC website. Because they spent a to, lot of time with them. Yeah, doesn't have to be updated like every eight years. Right. So they still have <clears throat> like owners from another owner. So, But they won't give you the information no. either. Well, you, all you can get is, I mean, I guess I, the original permit information. Yeah. So to, to try to, and, you know, there are a number of different structures up there. There's a number of different towers. I mean, there's radio, there's TV, there's Doppler, there's cellular, the 911 tower is up there. So, I mean. I know, and, and there's, and I, I and, you know, I, I told you today, I've read this thing numerous times, the, the, the 165 time. I helped write it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Such interesting reading. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. But, but um, after I read it again, I was like, well, the solar law has decommissioning provisions. The solar law has bonds that are required to be whatever. So I went to, and so does the telecommunications law. We don't have a single bond filed for any of those towers. Well, Not a to, single one. To, you know, point so if anybody is going to abandon one, well, there is one that's not in use, and the hut is. I mean, you could. There are there are some things on that though. You could walk. I don't in know what out. those are. From what I've been told, it's it's not hot. Maybe I'm wrong. Nancy, um, Nancy Furdock, Sevier Road, soon to be Sevier Road, <laughs> any day now. Um, um, speaking about about the the contact information there are clauses in the code that requires maintenance contacts they're supposed to have contacts for their maintenance right. so that would be a place to start but apparently we don't even have that and then in e e13 of 16510 um re inspection reports are re required so they're required to provide all this information but clearly they haven't been providing it what are what's the penalty for that? There's no stated penalty for for any of these. No, I, I mean it's <laughs> it's not a penalty kind of situation. It was meant to be a compliance situation. If you're gonna if you're gonna have a tower up there, these are the things you're supposed to do. <coughs> they weren't prop. They have not historically been properly monitored, right? By codes, they just haven't. So now we're in a situation where 25 years or so later. We're trying to figure out who to contact <laughs> and they've been sold. And we don't, I mean, it, it's been a, we've, tr we have tried, we've sent, we, I mean, we've gotten some responses. But if there's no penalty, what, what do they care? You know what I mean? <laughs> well, and you know, God bless you. Um, I, I hear what you're saying, Nancy. I, the, the statute that we have right now is what we're working with. Right. So, I, but I get it. I, 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 I saw the maintenance requirements. I saw the testing requirements in there, you know, the, the reporting requirements. And the problem could have been um, alleviated or mitigated if there had been some monitoring over time so that we had, you know, there would be something for us to look at that's more current than something. All we have are these addresses in the tax assessment role. So what can we do going forward to stop this from continuing? Well, <laughs> if you know what, that's what we're that's that's exactly what the problem is here. And and I and I, I I don't know if we have until we can figure out a way to determine what is on these towers. And we, we, we were here twenty years ago, and here we are again. Yeah. So I, I really, I mean, for. Well, now it's going to be my kids' sake. I mean, who, when we started this project, were infants just being born? Or same here. You know. I mean, isn't this T-Mobile thing imminent? It's, yeah. So, what is there anything we can do about? Well, that? all you know, Stan, Stan called me. Well, actually, it doesn't matter. We talked this morning, and um, I went up and looked at the situation because I 
I said, I'll go check it out. They were up there working. Um, I talked to the four person, I assume that's what he was. Um, very nice guy, very knowledgeable, pulled up the permit that they're work that's what they're working under and that's what i, I when i talked yep. to you this morning that's yep. what i said and the permit yep. spells it right out yep. but um who granted the permit the to the codes officer so so last july right last july, july yeah. was there public notice there, given there, on that there's nothing that, so that, that's the yeah. that's the issue the issue is that our code contemplates that co-location on an existing tower would not require site plan approval unless certain things are done, um, aside from just putting an antenna up on the top. And because the code enforcement officer at the time read the code, he made a determination, because he does make that determination in the first instance, whether or not a site plan process would be required. And he determined by issuing the building permit that a site plan process would not be required because under our code, they're just putting an antenna on an existing tower and they're not increasing the height of the tower. So that is, that's why the permit was issued. He, he or she, whoever the code enforcement officer is the person in the first instance that interprets our code. If you don't like the interpretation, then you can also, you can, the, the, the property owner, which is not you, um, can, could uh, ultimately, uh, appeal that to the zoning board of appeals, but uh, that wasn't necessary in this case because they agree. He agreed that it wasn't a wasn't site plan approval was not required in that instance. Is there any? I, I'm just, and I think this is getting to his point. If other, is there any way that the code things can be changed? So what, when they're making future, I mean, I think that's your, that's your point. Is, it, is there, are there any ways the to be the changed? Of this law was to have stuff in place so this this wouldn't happen. So, so like if they were going to so, you know, change out the, the the stuff on it, that they would need to have approval or, or at least have more information, you know, where they would have to go before. Is that, is that possible or or because it's already there, it's always going to be grandfathered in where they can't? I, I guess that's my, the, my interpretation of this law is different than the code. I disagree with the code officer's interpretation mm -hmm. because I think that if one of these cellular antennas, which are, I mean, uh, there's a picture there that shows a shovel that is this tall and it, two shovels will not cover the top of this tower or, or antenna, sorry, the antenna. And that antenna, the only place to put it is it shows the, the thing on the top of the tower. To me, it's going to increase the height. Maybe not the height of the tower. It might, it might come around the outside, which would, but right. either way, the, the, I, I, I don't. Way I honestly, but I'm I mean, just saying what I saw and what they said to me up there today. So, but there know. are going to be accessories attached to the tower, which is to code. Yes. Yeah, not accessory, uh, they're not a set. I mean, if you read, an, an accessory is something that is is um, in addition to the purpose for which. The original thing was built. The, the, this was built to put antennas on it, and therefore they're not accessory. We don't we don't even have a definition of an accessory structure. We have an accessory uh, definition of accessory use, but not of an. No, accessory. we do have accessory structure. It's it's not in telecommunications. It's okay. in the general. It, it's an accessory use. It's not the accessory structure. Yeah, oh, I, I just feel like here I am again, and I'm arguing with the town. Okay, I mean, this law is supposed to protect us, and and I just, I, I, if there, we were never notified, and the only reason I found out about this is because I'm doing research for the ECC. But a permit, you would not be notified about the issuance of by the codes officer for a permit. If your neighbor is building a pole barn, you don't get notified of that when he gets the permit issued. That's the same thing. If it goes to the planning board for site plan approval. And there's a public hearing, you're going to get notified. But if it's just the codes officer, as Tim said, making a determination in the first instance, which is his responsibility or hers, um, that is not that does not trigger notice to the neighborhood. It just doesn't. I'm just going to tell you my history with this. Our history with this was that when we went through all of this, I was involved with the draft. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I was promises were made from this town board. Not the, this town board. Okay, the town board that was in place in 2002, whoever that might yeah. be. 
I mean, I've got it all documented that any changes whatsoever on the tower overlay district, we would be notified. So those, now we're those, 2022. Those were the guarantees we were made. I'm just telling you where I'm no, I, and I And I don't. This is where it's frustrating for us. Well, and it's frustrating for me too, because I'm dealing with the fact that it was neglected for 20 years. And so we have no, I have no, like, like there's there's no there are no files on this. There's no, I mean I mean there's files on the towers, but as far as like any files on having like like monitored what's going on there and like contact having contact information with people to do maintenance and having somebody to call and say where's our report for this year, where's the testing for next year. So do we you have see, none of that. You see where our frustration yes, lies I, when these promises would be to us that the town would take care of this. And I, I do. Done. And this is where we're coming from. And now we've got another cell tower going up. The cell tower has been there. They're putting the antenna I, I, I would I would argue that the so tower has been there and now they're putting cellular antennas on it. That tower could have been used for something else in my mind. Maybe I'm wrong, but now <coughs> they're putting cellular antennas on top of a tower. That is, yes, it's been there. A pole has been there for a few years. Yeah. Um, I don't know exactly when that tower went up. And I'd have to go back and start looking at pictures from years and years ago. Maybe the tower shouldn't have gone up at all without being notified. And maybe it was put up. I mean, we, we can't, I mean, we, we, you know, this board bill here now cannot even speak to or be responsible for what happened 20 years ago, but we can be responsible for what happens yeah. from going forward. So what can we do now? Well, we've got to, we've got this to, is what we, I think is we got okay, to figure well, we out have, a way to make cellular it. antenna that, I mean, cellular tower, cellular antennas that are going up. I mean, what can we do about that now? I mean, is there, the, the building permit guess, has been issued Yeah, because a building permit has been issued. There is a, um, they have a right to build pursuant yeah. to the building permit. And right now we have a law that says it can be done. It can be done because there is no site plan requirement. So for that. So, what, so you can right? change the law so that says like, any changes, any antennas that you're putting up on a tower, and then you can eliminate that section D3, which says telecommunications antenna placed on existing telecommunication towers do not require a site plan approval. So that would, that would, I mean, I'm looking for a solution going forward. If we, if we come, if we address this law and make something so it more has to be said, the next, next, you can't change it now, but when the next time something comes, and that's they do come forward. That's the point right now. I mean, when was that determined that that was a telecommunications tower? It was put up as a tower. Do you read? There's a definition of what a telecommunications tower is. I know what a telecommunications tower is, but when was that tower defined as a telecommunications tower? When was it defined? Yeah, I mean, if it's a tower, it's a it's a pole that's sticking up. It could be for television. It could be for radio. But those are all telecommunications. For... If you read the definition of what a telecommunications <coughs> facility and system is in the statute, it's it, that all of those apply. I I, I, I mean, telecommunications to me goes to cellular. Oh no. Okay. It's radio, it's it's TV, it's cable. It's... <clears throat> what about telecommunications attorney getting their opinion on all this? Well, we happen to have somebody on our planning board who knows telecommunications who I'm going to be talking to. So before we get an attorney involved, which I don't think is the most appropriate way to handle it, I think what we want is is it somebody who understands because you and I have talked about the fact that we don't feel qualified to understand this world of telecommunications. It changes every day. I grow grass and cook steaks. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 don't I, do I that. think, I, we, should, I I think we should visit this law and have some oh, right. workshops and the, times and trying to figure out how to make this law better going forward so that his... I, I we can at least still, revisit it. You know, that, revisit that's, it. You know, maybe there's a way that, you know, something, you know, so you, then you have an idea if they're coming for permit. We can look at it, you know, in the future and say, oh, this is a different time of thing and it make sure it's safe and and more than just one zoning guy saying, yep, makes makes it checks off the boxes. Here it is. I agree with and that. That's what we have and, now. And I agree with that. And and to their point, there should be fines if this information isn't it, provided and, and it all should, that. They should be reassessed. Not, too. It's your, 
codified. So, you know what I mean? It, it is, it isn't in the statute. So how, we can't enforce it. We'd have to, we could change it. We could make there be punishment for that to be punishable. We can, we can moving forward, I think we can address that when we get to it. So, but you're saying my interpretation of this law is incorrect right now as it stands. We're, we're saying that the code enforcement officer's interpretation of the code is what's in, what, what counts. That's what we're saying. Okay. So, and he's already made a determination approximately a year ago or June, July. Yeah, June, July, July of last year that that this we, we do define what a communication tower is, and it says by illustration our facilities for hosting of radio, television, broadcast, telephone, microwave communications, two-way radio, and the like. So it, it, these towers were put in place to provide a platform for telecommunications. So to say that we're going to put an antenna on a communication tower or telecommunication tower, and that won't be subject to site plan, it's not an, that, that, that's not unusual. Um, most towns have something like that because they want to encourage use of one tower rather than use like several towers. Well, that's, that, that is in here and we yeah. talked about it. And then, I mean, what about view shed? When you talk about more candelabras going up on the top of this thing, and, and I mean, a lot of things that yeah. I don't think have been addressed. I mean, that's going to go from a pole to, and then ultimately it's going to look like the Verizon Tower, I can guarantee and, and you. I, and not that it matters to you, but if it, it once they put those antennas up for anybody that wants T-Mobile within an eight mile radius, they're going to be able to have T-Mobile, which is might be beneficial to people in the town because Verizon is really the only thing going right now. I don't know how good T-Mobile is. I'm not speaking to that. I'm just saying competition typically is good for um, the cost, but that's just, that's that's really neither here nor there. It's just, but the other thing um, I was gonna mention is that, um, and and I, I don't think any of us are averse to re revisiting the provisions here. So, you know, we can sit down and we can, we can go through this, this, the, the, the provisions that are not, and I know we talked this morning about trying to pattern it after solar because the provisions there are a little bit or clearer or whatever, but even in this thing, it, even in here, it says that the planning board, even if it comes before them, they can waive, they can waive the requirements that otherwise would apply. Um, as though for, for I think was the was the word ministerial or some you know whatever they were, were going to be doing that, and as I, as we said, you and I and probably nobody else in this room really has a a firm grasp of of what telecommunications is. <laughs> like and that's why I want to talk to Carl because I think he does. I think he could help with the. The, the science, the, the technology piece, so not the legal. T-Mobile's tower is, is a done deal is what you're saying. That, that one's going on. The antennas, they have a building permit <laughs> for it. The antennas, the antennas are antennas. going on that tower. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, here's the telecommunications tower um, definition, transmitting or receiving radio, television, telephone, <laughs> microwave I communications. Read it, I read it, I read it. What's that? I read it yeah. Yeah. So, that's what that is. Has a building permit ever been revoked for any reason? No, I was wondering that myself. How has it been revoked? Um, well, once a building permit has been issued, that means the code enforcement officer has done his, his due diligence, his evaluation, and has determined that 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 is a ministerial act on behalf of the town, and. You can rely on that as the person who's got the building permit to construct what is allowed on the, under the building permit. So the answer to your question is probably not. Yeah, only if he was going to build something that wasn't that. You know, if he started building a, yeah. something else, I mean, it would be all the other conditions that applies to new towers. Is what you're saying the stuff that's written in here, new towers. Unless it goes over the height of the original tower, unless. It's an accessory, a, accessory structure. structure on a secondary site. Well, accessory structure, or if it's on a, a secondary site, 
Okay, well, so we guess we need to know when that tower was built and when this law was put into force. Well, Why? What's well, because was that tower put in improperly according to this law? This code? I don't know the answer. I don't either. That would be an important thing to find out. I don't know the answer. Well, <clears throat> Well, somebody gave them permission to construct the tower. I can tell you that, or else it wouldn't be there. And um, now going back and saying, and even if it was, even if site plan was required at the time and it wasn't given, then that's the fault of the town. Um, and you once it's once you build it, um, you have a vested right or vested interest in it, and it's hard to take that back. You'll be exposed to all kinds of we get sued is what you're gonna say. Well what would happen okay they put up their antennas now if it goes above the top of that tower. Then that would be that should have had site plan approval in my opinion. Oh you don't agree with me? Okay. I don't think that's true. I think that this says the height of the tower has to be so oh if it if it mounts up the side and then it, and and he has things around the side and stick up a couple more feet it's going to be very marginal on whether that you know if they added another a whole section to the tower that changes the whole thing but if you're putting something around it where these and these panels that it's most likely they are going to you know even if you mount so, off the top edge they're going to be sticking up okay feet. You would think, or maybe they'll be down where they would be the same height. I don't. We could sit here and discuss this all night. So, but what I'm thinking is, it would make way more sense. And I, I see what you're saying, but I'm not sure I agree with what you're saying after is I read that. Picture of one it seems like it's, it's a referring. It might be the height of the tower, but it might yeah. be if the antenna the goes above the top, the top of the tire. Of the tower tower. Tower. But so what, that's what, what it's going to look like. like. Communications. Telecommunications. Okay. Yes, I, I, I interpret that as in any I mean, way. They mount them off the side. Okay. The top of the you, tower are probably so, the same so, yeah. I, That's what I was going to say. I don't think, I think so we've it, probably I mean, not exhausted this discussion, I'm but I think it's, it's, it's been a good discussion. It's brought out the issues. You've know, like, done a great job I mean, of identifying them. Off, you come in the one, James, one second. Oh, one second. There's one question. Okay. Let me just finish my thought. But I think that what would be most beneficial now is that we take a look at this, the provisions here, and, and, and I know your time is starting to be limited, so it's going to be. I'll, I'll make time to. Okay. Time All right. Well, that's what I think we should do. I think we should look at this. Um, Renee, since since Darren and I have a vested interest in what happens, I know you're, so, you're probably as close, if not closer. Right. We we'd like to have some kind of of, of inclusion and in discussions or whatever. Have you have you read this? Um, I'm not sure. Oh yeah, the code. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got notes on it that I can send you. Um, probably a lot of it's duplicate. What what Stan has said, but we we would definitely like to be included in in discussions. Okay. Well. That's why they're here. Yeah. So, duly noted. Um, is there, there's a comment? Just um, from Sheila uh, Larkin at number four road regarding the towers, who owns the property? And are they collecting money for the leasing of the towers? And then just a general comment. Thank you for taking the time to look at the engineering contract and finalizing a new engineer for the town. Thank you, Sheila. Um, and the answer to the first part, which just went out of my head because uh, I've got a senior moment. Who owns here. the property? And I oh, who owns the property? Um, that's on the tax roll. So we do know who owns it. And as far as like leasing, I'm, that's all we're ever being told is that, that everything on those towers is pretty much leased, unless mm -hmm. it's like the radio station that owns it. And then they have some of their things on it, but others can, they, they will open it to others, <clears throat> put things on. So that's, that's where we got the information to reach out to the, to your point, Channel Nine is the local, but they're owned by Next Star. Next Star, yeah. which is you know, and they own those ninety some odd acres there. Right, mm -hmm. they own the whole thing, which is why I, they probably are assessed the way they are at that six thirty six. So I mean, again, under you shed or any of that, we have no no recourse. Is what you're saying? I don't think the antenna. It's, yeah, no. I'm just going to say no for now. We will. We will take this up. 
Thank you. You're welcome. So much time. No, no, fine. Thanks, Dan. It's, yeah, thank you. Does anybody else have a? Okay. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Bill? I'll make the motion. Or you, you're making the motion or you want you me to second it? I just wanted to see if you're with a second it. Okay. I, I'm sorry because I don't think it's difficult to be the only one in virtual. Um, no, I am actually was looking at uh, the map of that property, not to back up here, but yeah, it shows next to our own Zed Hall property. Is that yep. correct? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, Sorry. I will second. Favor of Aye. 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 Post. Motion carried. Thank you all. Thank you. Good Lord. Oh, hang on.